Hey, hey! Here we go with chapter 13, lesson number 4, collinearity. What's that? You already know that word? Yeah, good. You've already come across it before. In chapter 1, looking at the straight line, we were determining whether three points were collinear, which means do they lie in a straight line, by considering the gradients of, for example, AB and BC. If we found that the gradients were equal, then there is also a common point B in AB and BC, meaning the three points would be collinear, so they would lie in a straight line, something like that. What we've now got to do is consider the same thing, but with vectors. Woo! So, in vectors, if vector AB equals KBC, so if AB is a multiple of BC, then you know that AB is going to be parallel. To BC. This is something that we looked at in the last lesson. Look back to that if you're unsure about parallel vectors. And since B is a common point to both vector AB and BC, then you would say that E, A, B, and C are collinear. So let's try some examples. Example number one prove that the points A, 2, 4, B, 8, 6, and C, 11, 7, are collinear. So this time I'm going to be thinking about the vectors. So the first thing to do is we need to think about the vector AB and the vector BC. So vector AB is going to be B minus A, which in this case is going to be 8, 6, take away 2, 4. If you work that out, you get down to 6, 2. Vector BC is going to be C minus B. So that's going to be 11, 7, take away 8, 6, which will give us 3, 1. Something that we looked at in the last lesson is we need to take out a common factor from the vector if we can, because we need the same vector in both AB and BC to show that they are parallel. So with this vector AB, keep going with that. Don't stop at 6, 2. You can take out 2 as a common factor. So it's 2 times the vector, 3, 1. From there then, there's the vector 3, 1 here, and there's the vector 3, 1 here, meaning then that these vectors will be parallel. So you can say then that AB would equal 2BC. This is something that we looked at in the last lesson. This is where we had to cross over. So you can say then that 2BC is going to be equal to, well, there's 1 there in front of the brackets, just 1 there. So you've got 1 times AB. So 2BC equals 1AB. Or in other words, AB equals 2BC. Because you can get down to that, it means that the lines, the vectors, are parallel. So AB is parallel to BC. And because they share a common point B in AB and BC, it means these vectors are going to be parallel. And the points will be collinear. Woo! Next one. Example two. Prove that A, B and C are collinear. Again, we need to start off the same way. We need to consider the vectors AB and BC. So for this one, vector AB is going to be B minus A. So we've got 1, 3, negative 1, take away 0, 1, 2. If you work that out, you get 1, 2, negative 3. Cannot take out any common factor? That is your answer. For BC, if we work that out, it's going to be C minus B. So we'd have 3, 7, negative 7, take away 1, 3, negative 1, which will give us 2, 4, negative 6. From there, Bilal, can you do anything else? Good, you're learning. So you can take out the 2 as a common factor. So we've got 2 and then 1, 2, negative 3. Because you've got these vectors the same, you can say then that, and then again, this is where you cross over. So you know that 2 times AB is going to be 1 times BC. So you'd write that down. 2AB equals BC. That was something that we did in the last lesson. You can say then, if you write it in terms of AB equals, you could say AB equals, and then divide both sides by 2, so AB equals a half BC. And that means then that the vectors AB and BC will be parallel. Woo! From there, how do you show they are collinear? Well, you've got to take it another step. You have to say that there is a common point. B has a common point in AB and BC. And since they're parallel, since there's a common point, you know then that A, B, and C are collinear. Woohoo! Next one. Example three. Prove that A, B, and C, once again, are collinear. Again, you start this off just the exact same way. So we need to consider the vectors A, B, and B, C. So the vector A, B is going to be B minus A. So we have 8, 3, 1, take away 2, negative 3, 4. If you work that out, you get 6, 6, negative 3. 
Take out a common factor. Common factor here of three, so you can say that's three times the vector. Two, two, negative one. With BC, it's C minus B, which is going to give us 12, seven, negative one. Take away eight, three, one, which will give us four, four, negative two. Where do we go from there? Good, common factor. So the common factor will be two. Brilliant. So it's two times the vector, two, two, negative one. From there, you want to cross over. So again, you can say that two AB, again, you're crossing over here, so two times AB is going to be equal to three times BC. So you'd write that down. Again, this is something that we did in the last lesson. Look back if you're unsure. Expressing one vector as the multiple of the other, well, taking AB, if you divide both sides by two, we can say that AB equals three over two, three halves BC. What does that mean then? If you can express one vector as a multiple of the other, it means they are parallel. Brilliant. So you can say then that AB is parallel to BC. And from there, well, because you have AB and BC, it means B is a common point to both AB and BC. So A, B and C are collinear. Woo! Next one. Example four. Are A, B, and C collinear? How would you start this one off? HSD Liam, go for it. Brilliant, well done. You want to consider the vectors A, B, and B, C. So doing the exact same thing, keep going Liam, what would you do? B minus A, brilliant. So if you have B minus A, you've got one negative six, three, take away three, negative four, one. And from there, that'll give us the vector, negative two, negative two, two. Take out common factors, what's the common factor here? Two. Brilliant. So we've got two times the vector, negative one, negative one, one. Excellent. The vector BC this time is going to be C minus B. So you'd have the vector negative one, negative five, eight, take away one, negative six, three. And if you do that, you would have negative two, one, five. Common factors, highest common factor is just one. So really, it's just staying as negative two, one, five. What does that mean then? Well, in order to prove they are parallel, you need the same vector. Again, it's something that we did in the last lesson. These vectors here, negative one, negative one, one, and negative two, one, five are obviously not equal. So you would then say that these vectors are not equal. It's just the equals with the line through it. They are not equal. And that means then that the vectors AB and BC are not parallel. No, no, no. Again, something in the last lesson. So that means then, are the points collinear? No, brilliant. They are not collinear. Excellent. Next example. The points A, negative 8, A, negative 12, B, 2, negative 5, 3, and C, 6, negative 15, B are known to be collinear. Woo! So it's already telling us they're collinear. Find the values of A and B. So to start this one off, Ava, what do you think we would do? Brilliant. We'd find the vectors AB and BC. So AB is going to be B minus A. So we are going to have two negative five, three, take away negative eight, A negative 12. And that'll then give us 10 negative five, take away A 15. Look at these numbers. I know I've got an A here, but I've got 10, a negative five and a 15. So for each of those numbers, I could take out five as a common factor. So let's do that. So I've got five and then I would have a two. And then if you take out five as a common factor for negative five, take away A, I'd be left with negative one, take away a fifth A. And take out the five as a common factor for 15. And it leaves me with three. Consider vector B, C as well. So that's going to be C take away B, which will be six negative 15 B, take away three negative five three, which will then give us four negative 10 and then B take away three. What we need though, is we need to show that these vectors are parallel. If we were asked to do that, if we were asked to show if they were parallel, to show they're collinear, we would need the same vector. So we really need to get down to the same vector here by taking out common factors. Here, well, I've got an A, in the y component and I've got a b here in the z component. The only one that's just numbers is really your x component. Here I've got a two and here I've got a four. In order to get the same number then, what I could do is I could take out two as a common factor for this vector here. So let's do that. If I take out the two, it'll give me that two, which is what I'm wanting in order to get the same vector. It'll give me negative five. And then really, if you take out two here, you're halving the b take away three. So it'll give me a half of B take away three. 
So now I have the same vector, or at least the x components are going to be equal. So really, since the vectors are collinear, their components must be equal. Now the x values, as you can see, they are already equal. We've got a 2 here and a 2 here, which means then that we can also equate the y and the z components as well. So you can say then, taking the y component, you can say that negative 1 take away a fifth of a equals negative 5, just equating the y's. From there then, well, I suppose you can multiply every single term by 5. It'll give me negative 5 take away a is negative 25. And from there, you can easily work out a, negative 5 take away what gives you negative 25? 20. So a is going to be 20. Do the same thing with the y, z components. So the 3 will be equal to a half b take away 3. If you multiply both sides by 2, it'll give you 6 equals b take away 3. And again, you can easily solve that to find b. We were asked to find the values of a and b, so we know that a then is 20 and b is equal to 9. Woo! So, try some of these questions, see how you get on. You're wanting to prove whether or not three points are collinear, and if they are, you can also find missing values just the way we did in that last example. Good luck! Try these. Woo! Bye!